This is the 2023 Ford Everest, a next generation model for Ford. This follows on behind the Ranger, the very popular four wheel drive ute, but it's worth noting that the Ranger and the Everest were developed side by side. They both use Ford's new T6.2 platform, which was developed and engineered mostly in Australia. This is a four wheel drive wagon. It'll seat seven, it'll tow three and a half tons. You've got a choice of two diesel powertrains there, only one automatic gearbox, however, and there's four trim grades as well. This new Ford Everest has a lot going on in terms of new technology, safety, specifications, off-road capability, all sorts of stuff. So there's a fair bit to get through here. The rain is starting to come down a little bit here, but I'm going to persist. Hopefully you'll persist with me as well. Let's have a closer look at this new Ford Everest. The 2023 Ford Everest is priced from $52,990 before on-road costs. And that's for the base specification Ambiente two-wheel drive model. Go for a four-wheel drive Ambiente and that costs $5,000 more at $57,990 once again before on-road costs. This base model is a five-seater, but it does come with a big 10-inch portrait-style infotainment display, eight-inch digital instrument cluster in front of the driver. There's a 17-inch wheels on the outside, cloth seats with manual adjustment as well, but other models above this one do get seven seats as standard. Other important upgrades for this Everest includes a 3.5-ton braked towing capacity. There's a lot more safety equipment, more technology on the inside. And this all sits on Ford's new T6.2 platform, and that's shared with Ford's new Ranger, as well as the Ranger Raptor. Under the bonnet of the Everest starts with a two liter bi-turbo four cylinder diesel engine, which makes 154 kilowatts and 500 Newton meters. And this runs through a 10 speed automatic gearbox. Four wheel drive models get permanent all wheel drive and a low range transfer case and locking differential as standard. This is the powertrain used on mid-spec trend specification as well, but Sport and Top Spec Platinum both use a diesel 3.0-litre V6. This makes 184 kilowatts and 600 newton meters, running through the same 10-speed auto gearbox. This is a four-wheel drive model only. Top Spec Platinum is priced from $77,690 before on-road costs, while the Sport goes for $69,090. What we've got here is the Sport V6 grade, and this could be the pick of the range, especially if you want V6 power under the bonnet. There is also a Platinum, which is at the top of the range, but it's a bit more expensive, and there is a lot going on with that car. It's got a little bit more of a chromey treatment going on, where this Sport is a bit more blacked out, as you can see. On the front, it's more of a blacked out grille going on, black 18 inch wheels, and more black details around the place as well. As you can see though, the headlights, it is all classic Ford at the moment. It's got that C-clamp style DRLs. It's nice and fat looking. This is a good looking four wheel drive in my opinion, and it's a great improvement over the old model. Now, one thing to note here, this will sound familiar if you've got any idea about the current generation Ranger. This new Everest has got a 50 mil wider wheel track and also a 50 mil longer wheelbase. And just like the Ranger, that is from shifting that front wheel forward by 50 mils for powertrain reasons, but better for approach angle and I think it's better for the looks. While this Sport might be the pick for V6, I've got to say the Ambiente isn't too bad either, so don't be shy from checking out that base model because it's a lot better than the old Ambiente. This is the interior of the new Ford Everest and as you can see, it's quite similar to the Ranger. That's a really good thing actually, however, it's not an exact copy and there are some important things to cover off in terms of the specification walk in this Everest. I'm currently in sport specification and that is one from the top. We've still got platinum above us here, but I've already got the 12 inch infotainment display here. In comparison to the Ranger, Ford only puts that in the top spec wild track and the Raptor of course, but in Everest, this big 12 inch display runs all the way down to trend and then Ambiente gets the smaller 10 inch display, which is, let's face it, really good anyway. It's got wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, there's a wireless phone charging pad there, you've got navigation, you've got digital radio. It's a really nice operating system with a lot of features built in. And if you've got things like the zone lighting, you've got the trailer control modules and all that sort of thing in this Everest, 
You can control it all nice and easily through this infotainment display. It's a great thing. One thing to note here, the digital dash in this sport spec is an eight inch display that runs across the range, except for platinum, which gets the larger 12.3 inch infotainment display. And that's only used on Ranger Raptor on the Ute side of things. It's a big, impressive display, yes, but this eight inch system is actually quite good as well. I am comparing a lot to Ranger here, but I think it is important in this sport specification and in fact across the entire range even base ambiente you get the additional glove box there and these pop out uh, cup holders two of those one under each air vent across the range once again ranger only puts that in the wild track so it's really nice to see ford have gone to that extra little bit of effort here to make this a little bit more practical and usable for everyday family usage two cup holders here there's a good size center console as well. And overall build quality and materials feels really good. This is a comfortable car to sit in. It's a comfortable car to drive and it looks modern and effective. I do really like what Ford has done with this interior. Here's the second row of the Everest, a very important place for a family four wheel drive like this one. And the first things to report, legroom and headroom, they're both really good. They've done the little scalloped treatment here in the top. You do have air vents in the roof. That is a nice thing to have. It does work well for getting air all through the cabin, but I do also like just the amount of legroom and headroom going on in this second row. And it's an important thing to note because when I jump into that third row later, I'm gonna be eating into a little bit of this because I do have a sliding seat base here. This is a 60-40 split by the way, but you do need to slide this seat forward to get some room happening into that third row. Other things to note here, we do have an air conditioning fan speed control. There's also a USB and USB-C power outlet. And of course, the old pop-down armrest with some pop-out cup holders there and some room for bottles in the doors. But in terms of general comfort, seating position and that sort of thing, this does feel very comfortable. So this is the third row of the Everest. I've squeezed myself in here. I've got this seat down at the moment just so you can see what's going on in terms of leg room and that sort of thing. But this seat, I've slid it forward enough so I'm pretty comfortable still in that second row. And now I'm in the back here. I've actually got a little bit of leg room on offer here. And the headroom is a little bit tight, but also not too bad. I can kind of scooch myself down slightly and I would be comfortable in here for a decent period, I think. There's a few other things to like. I like the big windows, there's good visibility here. I can kind of see what's going on. I think in some third rows, you can feel like a, a second class citizen or something like that, sort of really sconched back down, not being part of the car, you're almost in the boot, but this feels like you're a bit more included, I suppose, in the car. This does feel like a true three row vehicle in that sense. Some other nice details getting around here. I do like the air vents in the roof once again. There's two cup holders here. There's also a uh, bit of a smart design here. They've actually stretched that cup holder down in a long direction. You can fit a iPad or something like that in there, which for family usage is really important. There's also a power outlet there as well. And in terms of general comfort, for a third row, this is not going to compete with a Kia Carnival or a Hyundai Palisade or something like that but those things can't go off-road like this can, can't tow three and a half tons. This is pretty impressive. One little detail that I did pick up from Ford designers during this was that they spent a lot of time working on the interior width of this Everest. They did it on the Ranger as well, but they've tried to effectively maximize the interior space by pushing things around here, around your shoulders, out as far as possible. And I haven't got a tape measure to really do the full truth, but anecdotally, I do feel a little bit more in terms of shoulder width and hip width while sitting in this car, both in the middle and in the back row here. It does work quite well. If you are familiar with the development of the new Ford Ranger Ute, in terms of the powertrains, the platform and the development, all of that sort of thing, also the kind of positive reviews that that new Ranger Ute has been getting, this Everest isn't going to come as much of a surprise because this car shares a lot of things. New powertrains, updated transmissions. It's the same 6.2 platform underneath. That's Australian developed and engineered. And just like the Ranger, this feels like a really good thing to drive. It definitely has a little bit of a truck-like or four-wheel drive-like nature about it, which I actually really enjoy. The steering isn't too sharp or wide. It's not trying to be like a pretendy sports car or anything like that. It steers quite well actually when you do start to punch it through corners with a little bit of speed. There's a nice sense of balance and road holding there, but it doesn't throw the baby out with the bath water and I think that's really important. Bump absorption is really good. 
we've got a coil sprung watts linkage in the back of this car. And in comparison to a Ranger that has leaf springs in the back, a longer wheelbase, but much higher payloads, this does feel nice and soft and comfortable. It hasn't got that jiggle that the Ranger has. And this is really, really comfortable for driving around, going through pockmarked surfaces and that sort of thing. It does have a nice sense of balance there. Now, in terms of powertrains, I'm currently in the base specification model. That's called Ambiente. It's got a two liter by turbo running through a 10 speed automatic gearbox, but high specification models. I've been in the trend, I've been in the sport, and I've also been in the platinum, which means I've also had time with the V6. Uh, that is also running through a 10 speed auto, but just like the Ranger, these are two very good options for powertrains. The V6, it's the one that people will want, I'm sure, and it feels nice and relaxed and talky. It's pretty smooth and refined at the same time, but I have to say this two liter engine Ford has done a really good job of making this a better thing to drive in comparison to the previous generation Everest. It feels a bit more direct, it feels more responsive and just a bit more smooth as well and enjoyable to drive. So if your budget doesn't stretch as far as a V6, that's okay because this two liter by turbo engine does feel quite nice. But it's also got a slight economy advantage over that larger V6 as well. One thing to note with the different specifications here, the Platinum specification model does have 21 inch wheels. The others have a mixture. I'm currently riding in 17 inch wheels in this Ambiente, but the Trend and the Sport both have 18 inch wheels. And that's a big discrepancy. And it makes a bit of a difference in the way that the Everest drives and handles bumps. The Platinum was slightly busy. It didn't have that same sort of cosseting feel that lower specification models did have. So you'd probably prefer if you did live in an area that had really crappy roads, for example, lots of potholes, dirt, whatever it might be, you're probably better off looking at a Sport with the V6 or a lower specification grade with the smaller engine. Or the other choice is to get the top spec Platinum, but a no cost option of 18 inch alloy wheels and all terrain tires. Overall levels of refinement, comfort, and that sort of thing are really good in this car. This Everest does have really big boots to fill in a lot of regards. The old generation model, it was around for quite a while, but it was still right up at the top of the field. In comparison to models like the Pajero Sport, the new MUX Toyota Fortuna, it still felt like a really good option in that segment. And it was good enough in a way to compete with the Toyota Land Cruiser Prado. I think the Prado was still the most popular option and the Everest maybe didn't hit the nail on the head perfectly in that regard, but I think this model is really going to be able to give it a bit of a shake up. The next generation model hasn't gone up massively in price. The top specification Platinum still isn't as expensive as a Prado Kakadu, for example, but it's got the advantage of more power and torque, a better towing capacity and a bit of space inside. Whether it's as spacious as a Prado, I'm not sure. That's quite a big bus still but this Everest certainly has the edge on technology and features and all of that sort of thing probably safety as well but we'll stay tuned for a full review in that regard because that is a big opponent to try and take on the Toyota Land Cruiser Prado it's been such a popular car in Australia for so many years Toyota sells thousands of them every month and I think Ford wants a piece of that pie with this Everest I've got to say, this does feel really good and it's worth looking at. We haven't taken this Everest off-road just yet, but it's worth talking about the different driving modes that we have here available. All of the Everests come with a 10-speed automatic gearbox. There is no choice of a manual or even a six-speed automatic. And that means this Everest also gets automatic all-wheel drive on bitumen instead of a part-time four-wheel drive system like some of the competitors have. The old generation Everest used to have this. The new Ranger gets it as a first, but this new Everest gets it across the board, even in this base specification Ambiente model. And it's a good thing to have. You can choose too high, and that pretty much puts this thing in rear-wheel drive, or you can choose 4A. And what that does is it allows the car to use a clutch pack in between the front and the rear differentials, and it will automatically distribute torque between the front and the rear wheels when needed. So slippery conditions, uh, dirt roads, that sort of thing, 4A is a good 
option to have. And then on top of that, you've got 4H. That's four high, four wheel drive high. That's only for unsealed surfaces. And of course, low range and a locking rear differential on top of that. Now we haven't done the full off-road driving yet, so I'll save my verdict in that regard for a little bit later. And in the future, we will get this car through for a proper off-road review as well. So stay tuned for that. Ford did a fantastic job with the new Ranger. It's a seriously impressive four-wheel drive ute. And this Everest follows along in a lot of regards as well. It's loaded up with technology. It presents well, it drives well, it rides well. It does all the right things. And I think it's testament to Ford's Australian development and engineering team that have done a lot of the hard work in this Ranger and Everest platform. They did it with the last one as well. Those were very impressive vehicles, even though they were getting quite old. But this new model feels really good. And I think it's gonna do a lot in this segment. And it's gonna put some competitors on notice. The new Everest feels competent and capable off-road in its standard form. And it does feel like an improvement over the previous generation model. Most of that improvement, I think, comes from this next generation all-wheel drive system, which can lock into a true 50-50 split four-wheel drive mode for off-roading. Suspension handled the bumps and lumps off-road nicely, and high specification models got a handful of off-road driving modes that helped tailor the driving experience to suit the terrain. Ground clearance is solid at 226 millimeters, and a shorter front overhang, which comes from the slightly longer wheelbase, has improved the approach angle of this new Everest. And we do like the fact that Ford has included recovery points on the front from standard. On first impressions, this Ford Everest is a very good unit. There is a lot to like about it as a four-wheel drive, seven-seat SUV. There's good space and comfort in the first two rows, and the third row is actually pretty good too. I also like the amount of comfort and technology and safety and all of that sort of thing that Ford has included right across the range. The Platinum obviously has all of the bells and whistles, but the Ambiente isn't so bad on its own. It's a lot better than the old Everest Ambiente that felt a little bit too much like a base model car. Now there's a few things we don't know absolutely just yet. Now one of those is towing. This now has a three and a half ton brake to towing capacity. That's better than things like Prado. That's better than Fortuna. It's also better than Pajero Sport and it matches Isuzu MUX. But I'm keen to see what this is like actually towing, especially using that factory onboard electric brake controller and also off-road capability. We've done a little bit of off-roading today, just some basic stuff, and we don't know everything about that yet. I can't say that we've put this really through its paces to know how capable it is. So when we get one into the office, we'll take it off-road, we'll take it out in the bush and see what it can really do. But otherwise, as a family four-wheel drive that can do the daily grind with comfort, a little bit of style, and a couple of nice powertrains to choose from, this Everest seems to be quite good. <laughs> 